Picture this, a team of AI agents working in perfect harmony, conducting deep research and reasoning through complex problems in minutes instead of hours. Today, I'm going to show you how DeepSeek R1, combined with perplexities, sonar reasoning capabilities, is changing how we think about AI-assisted research. We'll take this powerful dual of R1 and perplexities sonar reasoning and integrate it into an automated NHN workflow expanding on previous AI research agent system to create something even more powerful, a fully automated team of AI researchers to produce in-depth, well-reasoned, and auto-cited content on demand. So what makes DeepSeek R1 stand out? It's designed for superior reasoning tasks. And in benchmark comparisons against OpenAI's O1 model, this is their flagship reasoning model, R1 is at par or better than O1 which is incredible because R1 is one-tenth the cost of OpenAI's O1. Additionally, it's fully open sourced and it's MIT licensed, which makes it commercially permissible. So let's see the R1 model in action with Perplexity Sonar Reasoning model. I'm in the Perplexity playground and I'm gonna take two use cases. The first is without R1, which is with a Sonar Pro model. And the second is with R1, which is the Sonar Reasoning model. I'm going to ask, what was Apple's first quarter 2025 results? So in the first case, the Sonar Pro goes and does the research and provides an output here, which is pretty good. Now, what's the difference with R1? So when I ask the same question, what was the Apple first quarter 2025 results? Look at the difference. There's a reasoning step at the beginning. So it says, OK, let's tackle this query about Apple's first quarter 2025 results. The user wants a concise and accurate answer based on the provided search results. So then it reasons, first, I need to go through each of the search results to gather the key figures and highlights. And then it's going to start with this search results. And uh, it's found that, and it's analyzing it. And then it talks about what it found in that uh, result. And then it says, OK, here's the second search results. And then it uh, notices that this search result confirms some of the figures from the first one. So there's a verification step that is using in its reasoning. Now it's looking at the third result and it reiterates that there's the same uh, figures. So it's building confidence that the result is correct. And then also in the fourth citation, it mentions further information. Now it then takes it to the next level and says, okay, now I need to synthesize the information in the structured answer. The user wants key highlights, so I'll list them numerically. So it's gonna do that. And each point uh, will cite the relevant sources and uh, it gives some examples of how to do that. And then here is a verification step. So check for consistency across the sources. So it's uh, doing some self-reflection and making sure there's consistency. And then finally here, it uh, will conclude with overall summary uh, citing the relevant sources. So if you look at the, uh, res uh, the resulting uh, answer, it's much more concise, you see? Key financial metrics, you have these segment uh, performance. This was uh, not really done here. And then also operation highlights and outlook. But one of the key things from this is that as you can see it's thinking, you can actually build confidence in its accuracy because it's doing this reasoning and thinking upfront. So let's take the power of the perplexity sonar R1 reasoning model inside a research agent flow. So I'm gonna build upon the news to newsletter AI automation and look at the results. So as a quick recap, this workflow starts with the news events that you want to monitor, in this case, Apple first quarter results and IBM's fourth quarter results, uh, both from an investor perspective. So the workflow will uh, take each of these uh, events and iterate through each one, right? So let's take the first one. So we're gonna go to this research leader and the research leader is responsible for doing the initial research and producing a table of contents uh, for, the, uh, for the research. So let's dive into the perplexity tool. So the query that it's gonna call the perplexity tool, the sonar raising tool is Apple's first quarter results from an investor perspective. So the result that it comes back from perplexity sonar reasoning is exactly the same reasoning steps that we saw in the playground. So you can see it says, okay, let's tackle this query about Apple's first quarter results. And then it goes through 
and it does exactly the same thing as what we saw before. So let's take a look from this, uh, the result of the research agent. So it's finished calling this perplexity tool, and now the research leader will generate an output. So let's take a look at the output. So I will now take this uh, output and put it into a nicer form. All right, so here's the output uh, in a uh, markdown uh, editor uh, called Obsidian. So I have the research leader uh, producing this output. So this is the topic analysis that it's gotten, and it synthesized the information back from the perplexity sonar reasoning. So it highlights these certain things, and then it then proposes a table of contents, right? So this is gonna be the structure of which we're gonna now pass to the project planner uh, to delegate information for deeper research from the research assistants. So I'm gonna to go to the next node, which is a project planner. It takes the table of contents from the research uh, leader, and then it breaks it down to the uh, research assistant. So I'm gonna dive into this. Uh, so for the first research, research assistant, uh, it's gonna specialize in the overview of financial performance, and this is the prompt. Right, so it's gonna dive more into uh, this topic. And then the second one is about segment analysis services and hardware, so it's gonna dive into that. And then the third one will dive into the investor sentiments and then uh, strategic impacts on technology sector and then finally future uh, outlook and recommendations. So it will, uh, each of the research agents, or research assistants here, so it's gonna spawn off five and it's going to then do some uh, further research. And let's just give an example then of a research assistant then using the perplexity tool. So again, this is an example. Uh, so in this case, um, the query to the perplexity tool is uh, the uh, results for the future outlook recommendations. So uh, the result of the perplexity node uh, will we'll, uh, use the reasoning again. So again, okay, let's tackle this query. And then it's gonna go through exactly the same steps as we saw in the, um, in the perplexity playground and give uh, a well thought out uh, response. So it's gonna then take all that information across all the five research assistants, gathering all information, the thinking that has been done by R1 in the sonar reasoning model, and then combine that, and then have the editor then uh, uh, edit all the citations and uh, produce a final output to be sent uh, to the Gmail. So here's the uh, email that it's sent. So it gives a summary and then uh, the overview of financial performance uh, segment uh, services and hardware, and then uh, all the citations. So I can open this up and it gives me the citations uh, from this research. And I can open up more citations and it points to exactly where I got information. And then at the end here, it also gives me uh, a uh, sources. So combining uh, all the citations into one source. So to wrap up, DeepSeek R1 and Perplexity Sonar Reasoning they're powerful tools for our AI automation within N10 to do next level research.